Well, friends, enjoy your stunt. Hi, hello, my name is M. Page, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about a Canadian true crime story. It might seem like I'm really positive when I'm going through this story, and it's just because true crime is something I'm very gravitated towards, and I'm super excited to share all the hard work that I've put into it. I've spent numerous hours researching, recording, re-recording, editing, watching documentaries, reading articles, and putting together this video for you, and I'm really proud of all my hard work, so I'm just very excited to share this with you. It feels like I'm back in college, but I absolutely love it. The main goal for my YouTube channel is to get as much information out there to as many people. The more information that's known about ongoing crimes, disappearances, murders, and kidnappings, the more luck we have into being able to help the police resolve them. The story I'm sharing with you today is of nine-year-old Sylvie Capravanchi. She was from Trois-Rivières, Quebec, and was last seen on July 31st, 2007. Sidrika was born on August 29, 1997. Unfortunately, she had disappeared just one month before her 10th birthday. Sidrika's story was known to be the most publicized story in Quebec history for a child disappearance. On July 31st, 2007, Sidrika was biking around her neighborhood, not too far from her house, with a friend. They were seen by witnesses just biking up and down the street, the girls weren't wearing a helmet, which is why it stood out to the witnesses. This wasn't out of the ordinary. It's very normal for girls to take off their helmets as soon as they bike away from their house. But unfortunately, it was said that the girls were seen approached by some man coming out of the woods. Later the, in the evening, the girls were seen knocking around door to door, asking if somebody had seen this black and white dog. It's believed that the man appro who approached them was the one who asked them to help find the dog. At 8.30 p.m. on the same evening, Cedrica's bike was found leaning against a fire hydrant. Unfortunately, that was the last known location of her. Cedrica's parents reported that she was missing that same evening, but unfortunately, police didn't really take action and think it was an abduction until 72 hours after it happened. So on August 2nd, police assumed that she might have been abducted. Before that, they were thinking it was just a runaway. But by this time, it was too late to send out an Amber Alert. If Sidrika had been taken, it was far too late for anyone to be able to catch whoever did it. There was a lot of difficulty between the Trois-Rivières Police and the Sûreté de Québec. Unfortunately, the, the municipal police of Trois-Rivières didn't want to ask for outside help from the provincial police. They didn't want to make it seem like they were incompetent or not able to solve the case. But... This unfortunately led to their demise because without the outside help of the Sudeté de Québec, they weren't able to solve the case or get enough evidence to be able to incriminate anyone. So unfortunately, pride took over and with the help of the provincial police, they may have been able to solve, to solve the crime. On August 13th, just two weeks after Cédrica was last seen, there was an $80,000 reward for any information leading to the recovery of Cédrica. This was later raised to $170,000, just two years later. At a local gas station, not far from Cedrica's last known location, they found a red suspicious vehicle on their security tapes. Police later investigated and found it was an Acura TSX. 258 of this model were sold in the province of Quebec, and five were sold in the Trois-Rivières area. Police were able to track down the five Acura owners. Four of the five agreed to do polygraph testing, but unfortunately, the fifth owner refused. His name is Jonathan Bétez, and he will later become police's number one suspect. Unfortunately, Jonathan refused to do the polygraph test three more times. Finally, on September 6, 2007, he agreed to have his vehicle tested for any evidence. Police later found out it was in the mechanic and didn't receive ownership or they didn't receive the keys to the vehicle until December of that same year. Unfortunately, by the time they received the vehicle, there was no more evidence and it was useless to them. It should also be noted that out of all five of the Acura owners in the Trois-Rivières area, Jonathan Bétez was the only one without an alibi. Sadly, with the refusal of the polygraph test and no evidence found in the vehicle of 
Jonathan because they were unable to incriminate him with any charges with the disappearance of Sidley. First, 2009, the two-year anniversary of Sidley Cas' last known location, Jonathan Bétez wins an all-inclusive weekend to a golf resort in Mont Tremblant. Little does he know that it's a police setup for him to be found incriminated with some sort of crime against Sidley Cas' disappearance. Everyone at this resort is a undercover cop, including the limousine driver and every attendant, every other contestant, people on the golf course, everyone is an undercover cop trying to get as much information to be able to charge Jonathan Bétez with this crime. One officer's main job was to befriend Bétez and eventually try to get some incriminating information on him. He later became friends with him and the friendship continued after this weekend. It went on for years and years and Jonathan confided in this friend, told him of all his financial trouble. The same friend offered Jonathan $15,000 to help him pursue his goal into becoming a professional poker player. At this point, Jonathan thought it was very suspicious and decided to end the friendship. So unfortunately, without Jonathan pursuing the friendship, police were not able to find anything incriminating on him again. In December of 2015, three hunters were about 15 kilometers from the last known location walking through the woods. They walked about and found a human skull and contacted the police. After further investigation, it was sadly found to be the remains of nine-year-old Cédrica Provencher. So on the same day that the information of Cédrica was released to the public, Jonathan Bétez was admitted to his local hospital for what he thought was a heart attack. After further tests, they found out he was having a severe panic attack. Now, I don't want to speculate, but I find it very coincidental that on the same day that somebody that he suspected of their disappearance and now murder, he's admitted to the hospital for anxiety. It's just too coincidental to me. At the same time that this information was released to the public, a local journalist who was helping police on the investigation received an anonymous phone call. The anonymous caller claimed to be a relative of an old motel owner down the road about five kilometers from Sidlika's last location. He was recently under new management and had burnt down in 2015 around this time due to a propane fire. But back in 2007, at the end of July, again when Sidlika was last known to be seen, a suspicious man rented a room. The next day after he checked out during cleanup, they noticed that there was blood all over the room. This was never brought to police's attention because the motel was, was often frequented by motorcyclists and gang members and they didn't want it to be reported or have suspicious police around and drive down business. Sadly, this seems like the biggest clue that would have led police to whoever did the crime, but unfortunately because it wasn't brought to anyone's attention until 2015, when the motel was already burnt down, it was far too late for anyone to be able to do anything. It said about 15% of Trois-Rivières residents who knew information about Sidlika's disappearance didn't come forward to police's attention in fear of having themselves investigated for this crime or something non-related. They just didn't want police to start investigating anything on them or finding any incriminating information. So sadly, ultimately, Sidlika was the one to pay for this. Bétez was still the, the police's number one suspect. They did do surveillance, they had wiretaping through his home, his work, his friends. They really tried to incriminate him with something. Eventually they did find him culpable and charged him with six counts of possession of child pornography. In October of 2018, Bétez had to present himself in court to defend himself of the charges. During the trial, it was investigated the police found this information unlawfully without a police warrant. Sadly, Jonathan Bétez was set free and he's still walking today. Although he is still police's number one suspect, there is no criminal evidence to charge Bétez for the disappearance and the murder of Cédric Capron. I hope I didn't bum you guys out too much, but there are a few lessons that we can all learn from this case. The first mistake that was made was when it was first reported to the police, it took 72 hours to take action upon the fact that it might be a disappearance or a kidnapping. There is no reason why they, they should have waited the 72 hours. It was known that Cédric was told 
or was last found to be looking for this dog with her friend, they should have sent out an Amber Alert with the information of the vehicle as soon as this information was made relevant to the police. The second mistake is that the Trois-Rivières police should have enlisted the help of the Sudeté de Québec as soon as possible. It's not often that they do have disappearances like this, so the more hands or the more information, the more help, the more everything, the more luck they have into solving this case. There is no reason why Pride should have taken over the fact that there is a nine-year-old girl who is missing and possibly kidnapped. There is no reason why. The biggest mistake made by all is something that you guys can all help in. Again, like I said earlier in the video, 15% of people did not come forward. If you see something suspicious, even if you don't know if there's any related crimes, report it to the police. It's up to them to do what they want with the information, but do your due diligence as a human being on this earth and report something suspicious if you see crazy shit happen. I feel myself getting really heated right now, but it's so important for us to spread awareness and for us to talk. If you go missing or if you got kidnapped, wouldn't you want other people to notice and to spread, to talk about it if they saw you getting kidnapped or would you want them to sit on the information for three years until you're found? Share, share the information you have. You have a voice and use it. It's important police won't be able to solve information without or solve crimes without all the information available to them hopefully i didn't bum you guys out too much like i said before true crime is really where i want my channel to be headed so if you do have any suggestions for any other canadian true crime stories hit me up send me a message i'm so down for suggestions enjoy your sunday friends stay safe hit that subscribe button click on the notification so you're the first to know when my video comes out every sunday See you guys next week.